So this is Paul Crane on the Castle Grant number no. two beat, and this is the lower pool in what is about two miles of fishing. It's a six road beat. This um, we've had a cracking week here, staying at Inverallen House with some of the guests. It's been great fun. Um, the whole purpose of this particular um, fishing down here, or certainly this visit down here, was uh, for casting tuition and to introduce one or two uh, nice people to the beat that have maybe never fished here before and we've had a great time. So I'm going to... the river's up a wee bit today so I'm thinking to myself, probably worth a wee cast, you never know. It's the it's the 15th of uh, March, 15th of March, a big day in the old um, trout fishing calendar, and yeah, why not have a wee cast and see what's happening. So I've got my 13 foot 6 um, bespoke, made in the UK uh, rod here, which I'll kind of show you in a wee bit when I finish my fishing, and to, so that's an eight weight rod, light as a feather. Uh, I'm fishing here with a, with a um, sink tip. So basically one of the cadence floating lines with a fast sinking poly leader. Um, what size of a, float, of a line is it? Well, I um, don't know if you can maybe see from the camera there, but the main body of this line is white. And so instantly I know that if I see a white line and it's a cadence line, I know for a fact that it's a seven weight line because we colour code all the lines. So any line that is white is most definitely a seven weight and any line that's orange is most definitely an eight weight. Any that's nine uh, are blue. 10 are green, 11 are grey, 6 are red, uh, 5 is yellow, 4 is pink, and we go back to grey again for a three weight line. The micro spay lines that we have in that range, and that's for our 11 foot, 11 foot uh, 3 rods, micro spay range is basically a range of very short headed extremely short headed um, spay lines with integrated running line this one's not one of these this is actually a seven weight shooting head that I'm using here um, but I rather a kind of spay line it was just I set this one up for a client yesterday who wanted to try a a shooting head but I tend to like a spay line so I don't I don't like the the join here I would rather that the, the line was attached to the casting head and because we have a we have um uh, I'll just pop that out there whilst I'm talking because we have a um a range of these lines from like three four weight right up to nine ten weight uh, they are very, very short headed, so the short head is 3, 4 weight up to the 5, 6 weight, so the 3, 4, 4, 5, 5, 6 are all 30 foot in the casting head, and they have integrated running line, uh, and then uh, the 6, 7 is 32 foot head, the 7, 8 is a 34 foot head, the 8, 9 is a 36 foot head and the 910 a 36 foot head because so they're very compact running lines very compact uh, um, casting heads on on these lines and it makes casting in areas like this sort of tricky areas well this isn't a tricky area but as you can see all the all the banks been cut and it's really nice but uh, it makes casting these really really easy this 11 foot 3 rods, but this is a 13 foot 6 rod, this one, and 
it's a nice easy action like all our cadence rods are really really nice easy action very forgiving um, and even when we've got this little northerly uh, breeze today um, it's really quite easy it's an eight weight rod as I say this is actually a seven weight line so it's a kind of lighter line for this rod but nevertheless it casts it really quite well you know we just have to adapt the, the casting technique a little for it uh, but um, cast it really quite well even with a wind in my face it's no problem to cast it uh, out there um, and basically when I'm fishing this pool I'm going to be fishing there could be fish actually lying from one side through to the other here um, it, it would could be quite probable or possible to, to hit a fish pretty much anywhere on the way around here I've got a cracking flow really really nice flow at this height the river's just a wee bit on the rise today uh, but again a uh, crack and crack and flow through this the, the the fly comes round really really nicely um and yeah it's nice i'm just going to enjoy my fishing talk to you a wee bit about the about the um range of lines that we have so so that was the micro spay lines, they all have integrated running lines, so they are in essence a very, very short spay line. We designed them in particular for the 11 foot 3 cadence rods, um, that, was the, that was the whole idea, and um, yeah, there it was. I'll just do a wee bit of fishing here, less yapping and a bit more fishing. I mean, this this is actually fishing itself. I don't need any any moving of the fly around there much at all, to be quite honest. That said, it's always good if you knew if you know a spa a place in the pool. I'm not really acquainted with this this pool, so I don't know it that well at all. Uh, but we just started using this place as a as a really good venue for our casting instruction and it's perfect because you can see it's so well kept uh, nice and private um, the lodge and the, the girls in the lodge are fabulous really really fabulous we've had such a good time up there uh, just lovely uh, they're, they're, it's so nice clean the food in um, Inveralan Lodge is absolutely cracking, uh, cooked by everyone. Just magic. I'm so glad that I've, I've taken some more fishing and introducing some nice clients up here because they're going to really, really like their experience here. It is just a lovely place. Gillies here, very, very good. We've got most of the spade gillies are. Uh, but these ones are no exception. Very, very good guys. Uh, mad keen, passionate, passionate people about the the river and it's um, looking after the salmon that we have in the river. Um, the, the guys are just superb. Very, very good casters in their own right. Um, Craig Robertson that's here and this beat, he He's a really keen photographer and takes some fantastic pictures which I'm sure we'll get to see in the near future. Um, but all in all this place is a, a, a superb place and a great place to bring uh, customers to. Not that other places are not, that's just the way things are and um, it's always nice for me to see new places as well. Um, we're quite high up the river here. I think it's about 40, 40 odd miles from the sea, which in mid-May, uh, uh, it's not going to take fish long to get from the from the sea straight to here. You'll find uh, fish with sea lice on them. Right at this moment in time, the fish tend to move a wee bit slower. But that said, there was a fish caught, we're talking the 15th of March today, but on, at the beginning of the week, on the 12th, there was a fish caught on 
uh, the beat just about a mile below here, uh, which su suggests that the fish are coming up into this area, so they are making their way up here, and we have a really nice height of water um, right now. You can see it's carrying the fly beautifully, and not just this pool, but but all the other pools up there carrying the fly, fly beautifully. They are really, really nice. So, yeah. All in all, a really, really nice place to come and fish. And I'm sitting here with just a good sense of anticipation of a fish, you know. It's an enjoyable, enjoyable place to fish. And uh, old Rio here, he's, he's liking it as well. The young dog's right behind the camera. He's sitting up there. He doesn't seem to like the fishing rods the same. I think he gets a bit scared by the fishing rod, so poor Kobe. He likes playing with his dummy, but he doesn't like doesn't like fishing. Nay like you, Rio. Nay like you. You love the fishing, and you love chasing fish when I've got one on as well. So the fly is just beginning to slow down there. So the swing's just beginning to slow down. So what I'm doing, I'm actually doing a wee bit of a figure eight here as the line's coming off the main stream. So I'm fishing it right tight into the edge. I think it's I think it's really important. I'm actually wading just now, but I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that I'm going to get... It was fine wading up at the beginning there, when I, as I walked in, um, that was good. But I have a feeling I'm just, going to, I'm just going to walk out and stand in the bank, because, I mean, I'm, I'm only a, a metre from the bank here, and because I'm only a metre from the bank, I'm not really gaining too much from being in the water. That said, some people like, when they're fishing, to be in the water, like knee deep. They find it very comfortable to be fishing knee deep um, from a casting perspective. And they're not showing themselves standing up on top of the bank. There's not so much of them showing to potentially move any fish that might be in here, right in front of us. Um, we've, had a, we've had an interesting conversations in the, in the um, house at night just about that, you know, and it's, I mean, our fishing courses here, they don't, they don't just apply to the time that we're fishing on the river, they actually apply to the time that we're, we're having dinner at night and around that table, and uh, lots of really nice conversation about fishing and stupidity and fun and laughing and whatever, but, but we, we, we do talk fishing as well. And one of the things that we were talking about just the other night, I think it was Tuesday night, was the fact that fish can be lying very, very close to the side. And very often people will just take out 30 yards of line and just start fishing. And they miss 30 yards of the pool, you know. It's always better just to take the fly off the reel, flick it in, especially in a place like this, because I can see that there's about four or five feet of water just in front of me, if I took two steps in there, I would be up to here in my wader. So I'm just going to make my way out of the bunk here. And I'm going to stand on the shore again. Give myself a wee bit of height here. One of the reasons for that as well is I've got a bit of an Achilles tendon problem just, just now. But anyway, straight away, when I'm up in the bunk, it, it puts a different dynamic on my casting. So my lift of the rod, whilst I was in the water, uh, the initial lift, and that's the prep of every single fly cast, but the initial lift um, was slightly higher when I was down there, so it can be slightly lower. Now, albeit that, when you're fishing with a sinking tip, and any form of sinking tip, uh, then it's good to apply this high lift, that was, a, that was a pool actually there as I was stripping the line in, uh, but it wasn't a pool from a salmon, it was a pool from a trout, they must have known that it's the 15th of uh, March today and we're allowed to actually catch them now, um, but I've got on, um, it's a fly, well, people call it a Gordon's Fancy, uh, other people call it a Barley Sugar, other people call it a Black and Yellow, it's just a black and yellow copper tube that I'm fishing on a sink tip. So I'm fishing fairly deep and by the time the fly comes into this five, four or five feet of water down here, 
it's going to be fairly, fairly deep. Uh, fishing fairly deep. Quite, quite shallow as it's coming through this part, but it's going to be sinking all the way around. Um, and because it's slowing down a little, I'm just going to start moving the, moving the fly a wee bit, just to try and keep that swing going in a nice even pace as it's coming off the main stream there right into the edge very important a lot a lot of salmon um, that i've seen caught over the years uh, have been caught on the last 30 percent of the drift i would say as a percentage I, you, you get very few salmon that will take in the first 30 percent of the drift you'll get quite a few that will take in the middle 30 percent of the drift but that's more, more so when the water warms up, but most fish will be caught on the last 30% of the drift. Most, anyway. There's, there's no hard and fast rules, and, and each, each uh, pool is slightly different from the other. Uh, the character's different, and so the, the places that the fish, in, fish are resting in the pools and likely to take the fly are different as well. So. Um, you, you just have to look at the river and if you have a gilly or a guide uh, who can tell you a wee bit about the river and about the specific pool then that's really good and a lot of the times people have seen it so often people people are paying for a guide or a gilly there's a full-time gilly on the beat and and people don't bother asking they just assume they just talk go into this pool and uh, start here and finish down there, but they don't ask about the structure of the pool, about how deep it is, about where the fish will be lying in it, um, uh, speed, depth of your fly. Uh, they, they just don't ask the question now. A lot of the gillies are really keen to answer that question uh, and will be very happy answering that question, but, but a lot of the times won't offer it up unless it's asked. So for me, if you're paying for a guide or a gilly on a particular piece of water, then you want to be asking questions before you start on the pool. So that's that's a, a really, really good bit of advice, actually. You know, it, uh, so many people just don't do it, or not enough people do it, you know. Um, because the gilly or guide, he's going to have seen that pool in every single uh, water height, every single water temperature, what, how the pool works at a particular water height um, during the spring is not not the same as that particular water height in the summer when the temperature is different. So there's so many variables and the knowledge of these guys uh, is fantastic, So, but you have to kind of unlock the, the knowledge, so yeah. It's all good, all good. The technique that I'm using here just now is not my normal technique, funnily enough. So I'm, I'm casting with more of like a like a traditional space tile. I'm up on the up on the bank, and because I'm up on the bank, I'm I'm going back to my uh, kind of what you would say. Uh, an original spay cast, which, which is lifting the rod, almost coming to a stop, swinging the rod, almost coming to a stop, and then making the forward cast or power application then. My normal cast is to, is to really um, keep, the, keep the rod moving, keeping it mobile, so not to pause it at the back. Uh, but because I'm up on the bank, you can see me drifting in toward the bank there. The whole idea of that little drift toward the bank is to push the push the anchor a little further out from me um, and so my D loop doesn't become disturbed by hitting the, the shore behind me. I'll do the other one just, just now, uh, which is the constant motion cast. It's not waiting to, for the D loop to develop, it's actually uh, you being the master of the D loop, you can see that much faster, lower trajectory of the, the rod um, and it, it just shows that 
Uh, basically, there's so many different ways you can make the spay cast, and again, one of the topics of conversation this week has been that some people say, oh, the spay cast has to be done this way, and it has to be done that way, and you have to do this. Um, there are there are certain uh, functions within a spay cast that must be done, you know. Uh, basically, it's moving the line under tension from one part of the river to the next, creating this D loop. There are there are certain things that have to be followed, but there are many many ways to skin the cat, as they say, um, and. Ah, spray casting can be done in many ways. So, my own my own method is that I like to uh, lift the rod. I've got a sink tip on here. The lift of the rod takes the tip onto the surface. So that means that I don't have to I don't have to roll the line up onto the surface uh, because my lift is taking care of that. Um, so that's fine. That's the way that I prefer to do it. But uh, other people. Uh, like to roll it on and have a much roll it up onto the surface that sink tip we'll just do one here uh, so they'll roll it like so and then they won't they won't lift the rod at all they'll just come come around like that um, equally as effective I suppose you know but it's a matter of preference it's not it's not the right or a wrong way to do it but it's your way in the way that you particularly like to do it you know that is the main thing and so hey, it's about enjoying it you know that line that sink tip has to be on the surface once it's on the surface then making a making a really nice uh, anchor here is uh, possible if, if the sink tip is still subsurface as we make the swing or sweep then unfortunately you're not going to get consistency in the anchor but that's a different conversation. So I think that'll about do me. I've got a, I've got one of my uh, customers up at the very top pool, which he'll now have been through. So I'm going to go and have a wee look at him, and we'll see if he's got a fish or not. Time will tell. There we go. All good in the hood done and dusted. Paul Crane on Castle Grant Beat 2. Uh, lovely pool to fish and I think when the fish arrive in sort of bigger quantities a wee bit later in the season, it means you they'll not be far now I would think. Um, this is 15th of March I think by First week in April, we're going to be back here in the first week of April, and I have a feeling we'll see one or two fish uh, at that time. So, time will tell, only time will tell, but uh, if not April, we're back here on the first week in June. Really, if you're fishing a place like this, fishing May and June and July are probably the best of the fishing. Um, but nice outside that as well, beautiful place to come and fish, absolutely gorgeous. This is the lovely handle we'll have on my uh, Cadence Rod, uh, and that's made by um, Ross James in uh, Wales, he puts it together for us. Everything's made in the UK, all good.